I'm Levi and this is my custom 3D printer. As of right now, all of the construction for this machine is complete, but it still doesn't work. The extruder still isn't quite extruding the plastic. I think I've located the problem and I believe that it's because the filament is melting in the throat of the extruder instead of just at the very tip. So the filament is getting soft and then collapsing on itself and no filament actually gets pushed down through the nozzle. Today I'm going to be fixing the printer, refining it, and then cleaning everything up to finally finish it. But first, I need to unclog this hot end. The nozzle is now unclogged and I've got the fan on there. The fan is just connected to the board with a bunch of male and female jumpers. And the pins for the fan are to the left of the x-axis motor driver here. So now I'm ready to go ahead and run another test print and hopefully it doesn't jam this time. So I started the test and the filament's coming out which you can kind of see it stringing around there but none of it stuck to the bed so I'm gonna heat the bed up more this time and we'll go for a second run. Take two. So I heated the bed up more this time. It's, it can only get up to 37 degrees but apparently that's enough because this is totally working. The filament's coming out beautifully. It's a little bit wavy, but I think I can fix that. So far, it's looking good. So it worked for a while, and it was going pretty good for that time, but then the x-axis got off. And I have no idea how that happened. I wasn't watching it, so I don't know if it ran into something, but I can't imagine what it would have ran into. I guess it is possible that the wires got hooked on the bar over here or something. But I'm gonna try again. Right there is a finished 3D print. The machine is working flawlessly now. The issues that it was having before with the X or Y axis cutting out, it's totally solved. And this little cube turned out beautifully. So I figured out that once again, my problem had to do with heat. I originally had these red motor drivers on here. But what happened is it would run for a little while and then eventually some of the motors would start cutting out. Then if I stopped and restarted the print, the motors would start cutting out immediately. So I thought maybe it had to do with the motor drivers heating up too much and then stop working properly. I also burned out one of the drivers while I was playing around with it, so I went ahead and switched to these purple ones. These drivers are the DRV8825s, and the reason that these work, at least I think, is because the IC itself is physically larger than that of the red stepper motor drivers, which would allow for better and more efficient uh, dissipation of heat. Not only that, but the heat sinks have better adhesion to the ICs so that they can be used more properly. And then as another added bonus, these go all the way to 30 second stepping, where these only went to 16 stepping. So with these new ones, not only is heat no longer a problem, not only does the printer work fine now, but it's also going to be double the resolution, at least hypothetically. So this is the first cube, and the quality is pretty good for a first successful print. It's supposed to be a two centimeter cube. The height is around 19.9, which I think is more of a bed leveling issue than anything else. And the depth and width is 19 and a half. So I can make some subtle adjustments to the steps per millimeters on the X and Y axes, and then it should be all tuned in. The rate of extrusion is pretty good. There is a little bit of waving on some of these sides, but only a little bit. It's not really anything to consider. I might try to adjust the extrusion rate in order to fix that, but I don't think I'm going to be worrying about it. It's only 10% infill and it's still really solid. There's no flex in any of the sides whatsoever. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turns out. The finish is better than I would have expected. So the problem with the drivers is now fixed. But there is still another pretty substantial problem, and that is this. There's still way too much slop on the unactuated sides 
of the X and Y axis. So I'd like to go ahead and add two more motors, another one for the X axis and another one for the Y axis, so that each uh, mini gantry thing is being actuated on both sides. That should totally remove all the slack. The only problem there is I'm not really sure how I can hook that up to the board since it's not really meant to do that, but I think I can jerry-rig something. You'll notice that these unactuated sides have these tongues on them, which are meant to have belt clamps attached to. So the system is already set up to have those additional motors on it. And I've also already gone ahead and created the aluminum brackets that would be used to hold the motors in place. I made these a few weeks ago. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach those motors and belts. It's not going to be super easy with everything already in place, but I should be able to manage. And then after that, I think the slop should be entirely gone. At this point, I have the two additional motors on it. So now there's a motor on each corner of the top of the frame. I also have the pulleys. I also have the pulleys that these additional belts will be wrapping around here, but I don't have the belts on yet. Before I get the belts and the belt clamps onto the frame, I wanna make sure that I can rotate these motors properly. The Z-axis motor driver has two wire outputs. So this one driver is driving that motor and that motor. So hypothetically, each of these drivers is capable of driving two motors at the same time. I just need to figure out how I can wire them up together. The other thing is that they need to be wired in such a way that each motor runs in the opposite direction. If both motors ran in the same direction, then one end will be pulled one way and the other will be pulled in the opposite, which is not anything we want to do. So I've got some male to female jumpers, some female to female, and some male to male jumpers, and I'll use those to try to figure out a way to wire everything together so that I can run two motors at the same time in opposite directions. I now have the two additional motors wired to the control board. So now if I go ahead and move the X or the Y axes, it moves just like normal. So now you'll see over here, this motor is moving in conjunction with it. So right now I don't have the belts on, but when I do have the belts, it will be moving in the proper direction. So each motor in the opposite corner is moving in the opposite direction to actuate the crossbar in the same direction. What I ended up doing was getting a couple of these really small breadboard chunks. I needed to connect two motors to the one motor output on the control board. So I ended up connecting the output on the board to this breadboard so that then I could connect the other two directly to it. And then with this setup, if I, for whatever reason, wanted to connect more motors to either the X or Y axes, I could, since there's more holes in there, but there's no reason that you would ever need more than two. And I tried a couple different ways of wiring these. At first I wired the coils of the stepper motors in series, which I knew wouldn't work. It kind of worked, but not very well whatsoever. So now I have them wired in parallel and it works just fine. It's just as quiet as it was before. On a circuit diagram, a stepper motor is usually depicted as two inductors, usually with a circle or something like that in the middle. So then on this diagram, I have two stepper motors and then your four motor outputs. To wire them in parallel, I just connected each output pin to the same corresponding pin on each of the stepper motors. So in here you can see that the black, green, red, and blue wires all go to the same corresponding points on the inductors. Wiring them in parallel like this means that all points on the stepper motor will have the same voltage potential so that the current is spread equally throughout all of the coils. If you were to wire these in series, it would still work, but it would be much louder since some of the coils would have more current than others due to their differing voltage potentials. This could mean either that one stepper motor is stronger than the other, or that individual coils on each stepper motor are stronger than the other coils. So it would make one step with a lot of current, and then the next step would be fairly weak, which causes vibrations and makes a lot of noise. So wiring them in parallel is definitely the way to go. It makes everything nice and smooth and quiet. So now that I've got all the motors turning in the proper direction, 
and they're moving smoothly and quietly. I'm now going to add the belt so that they can actually do their job and actuate the other side of the crossbars. The belts are now all in place and everything is working great. I can move the X and Y axes, everything is totally fine. There's no problems with noise or, or vibration or anything like that. That was the X, now here's the Y. It's just as quiet as it was before, so that's not a problem either. So overall the functionality is exactly the same, except the head is totally rigid. The only way that that hot end is going to move without being moved by the stepper motors is if the entire machine moves with it. With installing these new motors, I have created another problem. Originally, this limit switch mounted to this plastic bracket here and set right there. With the addition of this pulley and the aluminum mount that holds it, this plastic bracket piece has to be too low and won't be able to be actuated by the crossbar support like it was originally. So the limit switch will never actually be pressed. I need to redesign this plastic piece so that this long part comes out at a right angle. That way I'd be able to attach it to the inside here where there's a ton of room and still be able to be pressed by this piece. So now I'll go ahead and revise that design, print it, and then install it. The Y-axis limit switch is now in place once again, but before I do a full test print, I'm going to do some cable management to try and clean up some of these wires. I can't make everything look super nice for right now, there's still going to be a good amount of wires hanging around, but I can make it look at least a little better. I fed a lot of the wires through this half inch mesh tubing that I have here. So all the wires from the hot end are in a single tube, all of the limit switch wires are in one, and then all of the wires from the bed are in a single tube. Other than that, the majority of the wires coming out of the board are those that feed into the motors. And of course, all the motors are in separate corners of the machine, so I can't stick all the motor wires in a single tube or anything. So I still have them loose, but I did wrap them around the frame a little bit to shorten them so they're not all hanging down below the bench here. So my cable management definitely is not perfect, but it's manageable and it's better. It's not quite as ugly now. Once I get a 3D printed enclosure to house the screen and all the electronics, everything will look much nicer, much more professional. But until then, I'm just gonna have this and I'm fine with this. It doesn't look too terrible. At this point, the machine is finished and I know it works. So now there's just a couple things I need to do. Like I need to level the bed and I need to adjust some of the parameters in the firmware to really dial in the sizing. But then that'll really be all the adjustments I need to make and then I'll finally be ready for a real substantial test print. And that is a 3D printed octopus. In all honesty, it didn't turn out very good. There's a lot of warping and broken parts on it. The finish isn't great, but nonetheless, it is still a 3D printed piece. The source of most of the problems on here is just the fact that I can't heat the bed up enough since I don't have the proper power supply, but I can always fix that, so I'm not too concerned with how this didn't turn out great. Here's a close-up view of the printed octopus. Again, it's not pretty, it's not great, but it is still a 3D printed thing and it didn't come off the bed, so it is in some ways still a success. Almost every thin scroll pulled up from the bed, which I kind of expected seeing as how the bed wasn't up to temperature and these are really thin tentacles, but the one tentacle that didn't pull up still turned out pretty darn well. I think there was a point towards the beginning where the filament tube got stuck on 
one of the lead screws which caused it to lose a few steps but other than that everything stayed in place really well and of course there's a ton of warping on the bottom but the overall finish isn't terrible there is definitely some vertical lines which i think is a little bit of ghosting but that's not too bad and the detail on the eyes is actually surprisingly good but pretty much all of the problems that came with this print were due to the bed not having enough adhesion, which I can fix with the proper power supply or maybe just a glue stick or something. But the problems that I'm having right now are definitely not fatal. They can be remedied pretty easily. So overall, I'm satisfied with this print. It was definitely a good test. So with this test finished, I think that I can confidently say that this machine actually works. So with that being said, this is my somewhat finished custom DIY large format FDM 3D printer. Of course, there's still a few more things that I need to complete. I still need a proper 24 volt power supply to power this heated bed. And I still need to design and print an enclosure to house all the electronics and the LCD screen to make everything look truly finished. But I'm gonna hold off on that for a little bit. Right now, I'm satisfied because my 3D printer actually 3D prints. Designing and building this machine has certainly been a wonderful experience through the highs and lows. It's been fun nonetheless. I've always enjoyed making things, but it seems that I have a special fondness for making things that can make other things. And having completed this project, I'm looking into other things, maybe different types of 3D printers or even some custom built CNC's. At this point, this is the biggest project that I've ever completed and it turned out just as I hoped it would. And now that I have this, my ability to create new things should be expanded. And I've got a lot of ideas for stuff that I can make with this. So all in all, I'm very happy with how this turned out and I'm ecstatic that it's finally working. But I'm definitely ready to move on to other projects. So at this point, that's all I have, so bye.